So the Ablator Registry was a multi-center registry. It was uh, sponsored by Abbott, uh, involving uh, over 35 centers outside of the U.S., so including Canada, Europe, Asia, Australia, and basically included all patients undergoing atrial fibrillation ablation uh, using any combination of two tools from the Abbott repertoire. So that would include uh, their contact force ablation catheter, steerable sheath, uh, and or mapping system. And uh, all of those patients were then followed for six months and at 12 months to assess their one-year outcomes of AF ablation using those technologies. This particular presentation was on the subset of patients with persistent atrial fibrillation who were being ablated with a fiber optic contact force ablation catheter or the Tacticat ablation catheter. So of uh, 2,035 patients involved in the registry, this particular publication was limited to 346 patients with persistent atrial fibrillation who were being ablated with the Tacticat catheter. Um, we had two cohorts uh, divided in a two-to-one ratio of patients undergoing a first-time ablation versus patients who were presenting for a repeat ablation. And I thought this was very interesting because we don't actually have a lot of data on the outcomes of patients who are undergoing repeat procedures. What we found was that the one procedure success rate for patients undergoing a first ablation in persistent atrial fibrillation was 58%. And interestingly, the success rate in patients presenting for repeat ablation was exactly the same. It was 58%. Most of these patients underwent a PVI-only strategy. So this represented very much a post-STAR AF2 world where very few patients underwent uh, cafe ablation or linear ablation, the vast majority were having a PVI-only approach. Well, I think um, the results from the ablator registry represent a real-world result from a lot of different centers. And 58% uh, or nearly 60% is actually a pretty good number after one procedure with persistent atrial fibrillation. That number is certainly better than what we saw in STAR AF2. So whether or not contact force was directly responsible for this or not, we're not going to know for sure from the registry, but is certainly one hypothesis. The other important thing is that we also looked at safety. Uh, because with the early contact force data, there was some concerns about safety issues. And fortunately, what we found was that the catheter and the ablation procedures were very safe. Uh, there were no strokes, no deaths, no esophageal fistulas. Uh, there was uh, three cases of pericardial tamponade in all of the 346 cases, so that means the risk was much less than 1%. Well, I think it shows that with uh, modern day tools, including contact force sensing, that you can get a pretty decent outcome in patients with persistent atrial fibrillation using largely a PVI only approach. Um, can we improve those numbers beyond 60%? I think that's where we need to look in the future and see where other types of ablation outside of the PVIs might help or not. Um, I think there's still further research that needs to be done in terms of which types of persistent AF and how better to classify patients in persistent AF in order to maximize our success rates. And then finally, I think it shows that the safety of the procedure has definitely improved over time with a very low risk of complications.